dun, 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 dun. So probably one of the greatest songs by one of the greatest bands ever, Nothing Else Matters. When people are working to manage an autoimmune or pretty much any chronic condition, they typically focus on an anti-inflammatory diet and protocol. However, while this is a great thing to do and can get a long way towards better health, one often overlooked deal breaker to getting better is anemia. Anemia is a deal breaker. Period, end of story, no discussion, that's it. For any and all health conditions, if you have anemia and trying to heal, it's not gonna happen. Checking for anemia is the number one thing any functional medicine practitioner is taught to look for. And it should be the first thing that a lot of regular doctors look for as well. If you're anemic, your red blood cells are not carrying enough oxygen, which is essential to the rest of your body working. It's basically causing your body to slowly suffocate. Without oxygen, recovery and repair cannot happen. Really kind of sounds like a slow and painful way to go, which it is. Kind of a slow and painful death. Anemia typically causes fatigue, weakness, brain fog, depression, lightheadedness, dizziness, irregular heartbeat, cold hands and feet, chest pain, headaches, and pale skin, just to name a few outward symptoms. But there can be a lot of inward symptoms as well. There's several different causes and types of anemia. Not all anemia is iron deficiency anemia. It's important to know this because you don't want to supplement with iron if you don't need it. In excess, iron is more toxic than mercury, lead, or the other heavy metals. So be careful. So what are the types of anemia? Iron deficiency anemia, this is the most common form of anemia and is caused by insufficiency of iron, duh. What is less well known is that gluten intolerance and celiac disease can cause iron deficiency anemia. This is because these conditions damage the gut so that you can't absorb the iron. It is also caused by internal bleeding, such as from ulcers, hormone issues that can cause prolonged periods in women during their cycle, and other issues that may be impairing digestion and or absorption of iron in food in general. This shows up on a blood test as low iron and or ferritin or percent transfer and saturation, among other things. Another form is B12 anemia. Like it sounds, this is caused by insufficient B12. This could be due to a diet low in B12. You can screen for a B12 deficiency with a urinary methylmalonic acid and serum homocysteine test. Keep in mind that sometimes homocysteine levels can be altered in those that have the MTHFR SNP or single nucleotide polymorphism. Say that five times fast. Yeah. Another type is pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks a compound in the stomach called intrinsic factor, which is necessary for B12 absorption. Many people with autoimmune diseases, such as Hashimoto's, also have pernicious anemia. This appears as B12 anemia. Screening for intrinsic factor and parietal cell antibodies can identify pernicious anemia. Whew. Moving on, so some more types. Anemia of inflammation or chronic disease. I mentioned this one earlier, but it's worth mentioning again because it's such a huge cause. This type of anemia results from the breakdown of red blood cells. You may have symptoms of anemia, but your serum levels are normal. However, serum ferritin levels are typically high, indicating iron is not being used correctly by the body. Sources of inflammation that can cause this type of anemia are disease, toxicity, uh, infections, gut damage, overtraining, and more. It's important to rule out because taking iron with this kind of anemia can exacerbate the inflammation, make it worse. Other less common types of anemia include aplastic anemia, anemia associated with bone marrow disease, hemolytic anemia, and sickle cell anemia. At the other end of the spectrum, we have people with too much iron in their blood. Some people have a genetic disorder that leads them to absorb too much iron. It's a relatively common condition affecting about 1 million people in the United States. Symptoms include joint pain, chronic fatigue, heart flutters, and abdominal pain. If left untreated, it can increase the risk of diabetes, arthritis, liver inflammation or cirrhosis, sexual dysfunction, and other d diseases. It's called hemochromatosis. There's another one to try five times fast. Hemochromatosis, 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 hemochromatosis. Hmm, actually, not too bad. 
Hemochromatosis is managed through regular blood draws, or kind of similar to bloodletting, and a diet that minimizes iron intake. Or you can go get leeches. That'll help. Some other common causes of elevated iron levels include chronic inflammation, ah, which causes your body to hold on to iron, thus leading to a buildup in the blood and tissues. The very common but often overlooked causes of iron overload, taking the wrong supplements. I'll say that one again, taking the wrong supplements. This is very common with women who think that just because they're a woman that uh, they should take iron. So if you'd like to get your iron levels checked or do a full blood panel and see how your overall health is, I'd be happy to oblige. I've included some links on where to get some good quality iron and uh, as a side note, if you are taking iron, if you're taking a non-heme iron, you need HCL and vitamin C to help you absorb it. If it's a heme iron, then it's going to be a lot more absorbable. But another subject for another post. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy. Trust in you.